Well, hello everybody. It's uh, Doug Rucker with DougRuckerSchool.com and DougRuckerStore.com. Hey, we've uh, I've always been selling the King Slinger and been selling quite a few of them here the last six months, eight months or so. People getting ready, I guess, for winter and just new people getting into the business. But one of the fewer uh, viewers had a question about transferring bleach from a holding tank to your tank on your truck. So I'm going to show you some methods that we've used in the past and what we do now coming up next. All right, guys, so pardon the mess. It's uh, I haven't cleaned this up with the barn up in a little while, but uh, all the leaves are in here from fall and winter and I usually wait until they're all done and then come in here and do one cleaning but anyway a uh, couple of few different ways you can transfer your bleach using your existing system whether it's a uh, air diaphragm system a 12 volt system um, Multiple, multiple different ways you can do with your existing system as long as you have it plumbed properly to use it or disconnecting it and using separate hoses. But we used to do uh, use the air diaphragm pump. I have a 10 gallon per minute pump just like what's on the King Slinger. And so I have a separate air hose over here and we would hook this up to the pump over there I've got a little uh, valve stem coming out of it and then this other side we would hook up to the yellow hose that's on the King Slinger and then we would use this we've got a half inch hose that's set up and it just goes down with a 90 on the bottom of it and we could throw it down into the bottom of our bleach tank here and then we would have the outlet hose, which right now is in the water tank that we use to rinse when we're done. And then that would just connect over here to this ball valve. And this ball valve would go straight back, uh, the hose off the ball valve goes straight back to our bleach tank and it goes up to the top of the tank similar to what you see on the water tank there but uh, the hose goes all the way through a uniseal just like that looks and then all the way to the bottom of the tank and we've got it weighted with some PVC so that it stays at the bottom and then that way since the hose is at the bottom if you've got soap in your tank you're not going to get a bunch of suds coming up because it's not creating an air gap. Now that's a pretty easy way to do it. If you've got the King Slinger, um, again, this is a separate pump that we used so that I didn't have to, uh, a little bit more changing, um, not as much changing, but I didn't want to run it through the 200 foot hose on my King Slinger reel. The full strength bleats that much. so. That's why I had a separate pump just for doing that. Um, everybody knows on my King Slinger, I uh, do not use my third valve for soap. So if you wanted to, you could actually just use your unit here and you could hook up a supplemental hose. We sell a supplemental hose kit. I think it kind of comes with this fitting and you hook it to that valve and then that the other end would go to like we use wrap for cleaning gutters to black stripes off of gutters if i wanted to spread a lot of degreaser onto parking lots i could do that um, uh, you could even spray acids through it all types of things that you can spray through this pump this is a very durable pump so what you would need is you would just need this fitting it would uh, go over that fitting right there and then you would just need a hose long enough that's going to go from there to your fill tank or your tank that's got bleach in it 
then you would turn both your water valve and your bleach valves off and use only this valve so that valve would actually pull the bleach in you would use your 200 foot spray hose over there and put it through the cap loosen the cap on the bleach tank and then just squeeze the trigger or use a ball valve or whatever um, I don't really like this method because I have to open the cap our bleach tank is vented so none of the fumes escape out of the top of it when we're filling I like that much better um, and so it just causes a lot less rust so if you fill it by opening the cap what happens is the exhaust or the gases and the fumes come up from the out of the uh, manhole on the tank and they'll go they'll float downward and start attacking everything on your truck or your trailer but that is one method that you could use um, one thing that's very important no matter what method you that you use you want to make sure that you rinse your pump out really really well and the hose and whatever you're using that's why we have a water tank here so that we can put our inlet hose in there when we're done and what we'll do is we'll push a little bit of water into tank not enough that's going to uh, hurt anything and then once I know there's a little bit of water in then I pull the hose and uh, we'll lay it out into my grass or yard or driveway or whatever and just let water continue to pump through uh, the pump for four or five minutes also guys on the kingslinger method if you wanted to use that valve i'll show you what you could do because we um, do this sometimes if we're out on a job or something but you could have a piece of three quarter inch hose or half inch hose or whatever you use um, this is three quarter coming to the reel and so we've got the reel uh, fixed with banjo fittings so you could actually pop this off and have a three-quarter hose that's going to your tank that you needed to fill um, and then you're bypassing the 200 feet of hose you're not running it through that that hose because you lose about five gallons or so in the hose um, of course it would still go into your tank when you do the pump out when you watch out the uh, pump but that's another thing you could do too we have this set to where we could pull this hose off if we need to and uh, hook up a smaller hose I don't want to unreal you know 200 feet of hose on a job that only needs 50 so we have 50 feet of hose over in one of the cabinets that we can do that if we wanted to so that's another way that you could do it as well Another easy way to do it is you could buy a separate auxiliary 12 volt pump like this. This is actually a 110 that just plugs into an outlet. This one doesn't have a switch on it, so as soon as you plug it in, it starts pumping. Um, I don't even have this set up for uh, transferring. This is set up so I can hook water hoses to it, um, depending on what I'm trying to. I use this for pumping out of barrels or just various things so I use water hoses for that but you could uh, get the poly fittings that would fit your half inch hose and uh, put you know your your inlet um, drop stick like this into the tank and then hook the outlet up to your uh, bleach tank on your truck or trailer plug this in and it would start pumping Another important thing to tell you guys is whenever you're filling bleach tanks, make sure that whoever is in charge of doing that, whether you're a solo operation or you've got employees, that the person pumping the bleach never leaves uh, the truck. You know, it, let's say you've got a 100 gallon tank and it's completely empty. He may walk off and try to do something else, try to multi multitask or whatever next thing you know he's forgotten that he's filling this bleach and before you know it depending on the gallon per minute of your pump this thing's overflowing that has happened to us before so i just had a rule when i had uh, employees and multiple trucks and stuff that anybody that was in charge of filling the bleach up that morning 
they were never to leave the truck. They were to stand and watch uh, the tank as it was filling up. Can't be on their phone, <laughs> can't get distracted or whatever. Um, it's, it was just a hard, fast rule we had to develop. But anyway, um, oh, and one other thing is make sure they're wearing proper uh, protection, uh, eyeglasses, gloves, things of that nature. So, uh, yeah, 12 volt, that would be a very easy way to do it. You could probably even find one that um, has a switch on it so you could leave it plugged in. But this is just one of the flow jets that I have that I use for other things. So the way I do it now, guys, is I have this uh, drum pump. It's an electric pump. Um, it's not plugged in, but uh, it's got two different speeds on it. And it's got this long stick, drop stick, that would go down. And it goes down all the way into the bottom of that tank. We just emptied this one the other day. We had a bank job to do. That one's empty. This one's full. Um, so it goes all the way to the bottom and then we just simply flip it on and it'll start pumping right through that hose and I'll come over here and I would turn the ball valve on and it'll pump just like I was talking a while ago when I used the air diaphragm. And then once I'm done, what I do is I turn the pump off and I'll pull it up and I'll hold it right like that to let it kind of drain out of the drop tube and get some going down the hose back this way. Then I take it over here, stick it into the tank of the water. I'll turn it back on and I'll get a little water going through it. And then once the water is going through it and it's all the way to the tank, then I'll turn the pump off. I turn my ball valve off. Because if you don't turn your ball valve off, it'll start, the bleach will start leaking back through here. Then I take the, uh, trying to do this with one hand, take the banjo fitting apart and get the hose off. Sorry about that. Okay, so once I have that out, then I just simply take this end of the hose, my inlet, and I'll bring it back over here, stick it back into the tank, and then I turn the pump on, and I just let the water recirculate through that tank. I don't do it now like I used to where I said I throw it in the yard <clears throat> because I figured out one day I can just recirculate this water and saves me uh, having to fill this tank up so many times. So <clears throat> that's how I transfer is using that, uh, drum pump. I got that idea actually from a guy named Ray uh, Notorio. He has a great YouTube channel as well. Um, and of course, I've had this thing about a year, I think a year and a half maybe. And back then they were about 400 bucks or whatever. I went to uh, send the guy the Amazon link the other day and he emailed me back and said it was broken. And sure enough, the reason it's broken is they're all the way up to about $1,400 $1, now. So, <clears throat> you may want to consider finding an alternative method on that because I certainly wouldn't pay that much for that. But it's been well worth the money um, to have this little drum pump just so much easier. Um, and it pumps way faster than the air diaphragm pump or a 12 volt pump. So, um, that's basically how we, how we do it, but it's really pretty simple. You just have to have some type of pump and hoses and drop tubes and all that kind of stuff, whatever you need. Um, inlet is going to be the uh, side where your bleach is coming out of your holding tank. And then the outlet, you're going to plumb to go to wherever your bleach tank is on your truck or your trailer. Okay, guys, um, I hope this has been helpful for you. I kind of went through it pretty quick, but it really is uh, a simple process. It's just, you know, like any pump, it's uh, water in or bleach in and water out, bleach out. So it's just a matter of figuring out your plumbing. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at uh, pressurecleaningschool at gmail.com or uh, you can uh, uh, info at dougruckerstore.com and you can always text us at 281 612 12.
two, three. Um, hit that subscribe, uh, hit the bell. Uh, that way you get notifications. If uh, these videos can be helpful to you, leave me a like, a comment if you have any questions on what I just talked about. And also, don't forget, our Difference Maker Conference is coming up February 2nd and 3rd, just a few days, a few couple of weeks, uh, right here in Kingwood, Texas. So go to pressurewashingschool.com slash events, and you can check that out, as well as the Frontline Restoration Training that will be here that weekend as well on February 4th. And then our next hands-on training is February 6th and 7th, right here in Houston. So... Thank you guys so much. Hope everybody is having a great new year. And uh, if we can help in any way, just let us know. Y'all have a blessed day.